Hey everybody, Mike Tony here, and today we're going to go over my style of shaving. So I was asked by someone named Kavion Cookie, I believe, I might have said that wrong, um, to do a video on how I do my shading, my cell shading. It's not very difficult, um, it should be a pretty quick video, I'm just going to try to shade this random character, character that I've been working on, and uh, hopefully it comes out pretty good. So the first thing I generally do is, uh, before I even start coloring my character and stuff, I create a base color that I put the character on. Um, and let me add this, the lines to it. And so the base color is, you know, generally some type, some form of gray that I make. And here it is right here. And uh, what I like to do from there is I add the colors onto the character and I can basically clip them onto my base color. So once I've done all that, once I've created my base colors and uh, I've clipped them to, oh, once I've kind of my main, created my main colors and I've clipped them to my base color and I'm ready for shading, I click on that base color again, I take that color, I duplicate it. Then I take that layer and I just drag it above all the other layers. So now that it's sitting on top. And let me actually, because I was doing a little bit of extra stuff, let me get rid of just random things that I don't actually need um, and fill this color in correctly. So give me a couple seconds. Boom. And. All right, <clears throat> so now that my base color is just sitting on top of all the layers and I'm clicked on it, I go to layer style, which says normal here in the corner, and I just turn that to multiply. So now you should be able to see through. Everything should look darker. And instead of adding the shadow as I go, I actually like to cut away from the shadow. Uh, and the reason why I do that is before when I used to add the shadow, I felt like everything seemed very spotty uh, and I wasn't getting strong enough shadows. I wasn't getting large enough shadows. It just, I don't know, it looked really tacky. And I saw another YouTuber actually do this and it was like an aha moment for me because that it's not for everybody. Um, but particularly for me, I thought it really, really helped. Um, something I didn't mention in the beginning is no matter what you do, uh, you always want to try and um, figure out what your light source is going to be before you even get started. So I'm just going to throw up a light source very quickly in the corner. It seems stupid, but even for someone like me who is like still practicing or whatever and have a little bit of a hang of it, um, I still do it. And some of the best artists I know um, – I know and don't know. Uh, I, I see them do that at, for examples, and to be honest, it, it doesn't hurt. You know, it really helps. So the yellow dot is my light source. I want to constantly remember that. I want to constantly remember um, where it's shining from. I know it's shining down and it's shining out here, and that's going to give me a better idea of kind of what what needs to be cut out for my character. So I'm not going to say this is like an advanced technique, but you really want to have a better understanding of um, your light sources and lighting when you do this because uh, it's a lot harder, I feel like, in my opinion, to actually cut out the light areas um, because there are a couple areas that you just don't think about that you will actually miss. And that was something that was really difficult for me in the beginning. Like, when I started, I was just kind of like, man, where do I start? Because now it's everything. It's like, where, where do I start? And now because everything is large, uh, everything is all covered in shadow, I get a better opportunity to see like the bigger shadows and not the smaller shadows. But what that does then, that takes away the ideas of the smaller shadows, at least for me in my opinion. Um, and so that was very difficult for me. And I think starting off, trying to pick shadows out first uh, actually helped in, in, in this instance of um, best case scenario as far as like figuring what is in light and what is dark. So I realize I actually want that light to, to, to extend down even further um, on the arm. 
And then instead of this being light, we're just going to change that into dark. Let's get rid of that. I'll just okay. And what I also uh, forgot to do in the beginning, uh, what you should do is you should always take this gray color you're using for your multiplier and make sure you have it in your swatches here so that way you can go back in and you can actually refill in shadows when you need to because um, that's crucial. So you saw how I just made that chicken out of light piece here. Instead, now I'm going to have a shadow being casted off of this tendon. And I can easily go in and do that when I need to if I have um, if I have my gray color already set up. So that's that's a huge help. It, it really helps cut down the time when you're doing that. And, you know, that looks decent. Well, it's, it's all right. I can live with it. Um, the chest for me is pretty hard, especially with clothing, because the light is shining down and out. Um, and there's a lot of ways that you can kind of go about this. Depending on how big the character's chest is, you know, only the top part of his body might receive light. I'm just going to do a quick example of that. So it might just be like this. And the bottom part could be in shadow. Um, but from what I'm seeing here, my character is kind of hot chested. It's a young boy. Um, so I feel like the light is going to be able to cast down pretty much on his chest. You're going to be able to get it. You know, you're going get, to get some good light here on his um, really wide turtleneck. And so I'm actually going to try to get the lights worked here first for the turtleneck. And I still go little by little um, for light sources. I try not to go too big at first because I don't want to just lose a couple of things. So... Um, like lose the 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 mental idea of, of certain things so i do move a little slowly but forgive me for not just cutting out huge chunks of areas um i know that the light the way it is is probably going to get inside here a little bit um and i want to kind of show that so i'm going to show some light that's hitting on the inside but it's actually not getting to the back of the collar and I think what that shows is that that kind of shows the area of the light, you know, that it, it is a little bit in front of him. So you are going to get some light shining into his collar. Um, you also have to, in anything that you study, you also should be studying from light. Um, it's imperative because even though we want things to, we're drawing a cartoon or we're drawing an anime or manga, we still want things to look realistic in a cartoon manner. So I still want the clothes to seem um, realistic. I still want the clothes to seem flowy and the wrinkles and stuff like that to seem like they're believable. But just in 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 manga form or in anime form. So we want to keep that in mind that studying for life is is imperative. Um, there's a couple people that follow me on Instagram and um, they they want to advice or examples and stuff like that of what they should and should not be doing or how certain things are working. In my mind, I, I tend to go back to say, you know, basics, basics, basics. And it's not because they're not good at certain things. It's just because initially you want to come off and, and, and have your basics not nailed because I don't think anybody, well, Kim jong has it nailed. A couple artists have it nailed. But, um, but that you could always go back and practice that and hit that to some degree. Now, I made a mistake with that shadow. If the light is hitting that directly on, then, you know, we don't really need that shadow there. Um, and now, what having these big shadows really help me do is they help me define the three-dimensional shape of this figure because I'm not necessarily doing it um, with my line art, which I should be doing, um, and I, gotta, I have to get better at that. There's just no, no way around that. Um, but I realized that there's going to be a thick part of the body on the side that we're just that the light is just never going to touch and i want to make that known and i'm going to make that known by leaving that in shadow and in that moment you get a chance to really see like how three quarters the character is and right now it's like he's actually a little bit skewed i'm actually going to have it eat away at this just a little more to show that he has turned a little bit more you can see a little bit more of his front end and this is his side so, um, but like, if I, if I had done this my traditional way or the normal way I do it, this side shadow would not be as big. It would be very small. If anything, it would look like this, for example, you know, I would have cut it down to this. And to be honest, like that is not as powerful as 
this area, you know? So that little bit of strength, in my opinion, it adds a lot. Um, it adds a lot to the intensity. And so that's why I decided to go this route instead of just kind of picking out um, these little shadows here and there, which you still have to understand. Like this part is underneath like this, this, this wrinkle in the shirt, the light is not going to get under here. This is a bump that's, that's created by the fabric hitting this tied up belt. So that's going to be covered in shadow. I know that. Um, and there's these little areas here. I'm going to go back in and make finer and darker shadows. But these areas here. All right. Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm back. I'm sorry. My computer shut off, and I actually lost everything that I just showed you guys. So I tried to go back in and recreate that as close as possible before I had this huge derp. So hopefully that, that didn't throw you off in your time. It should only seem like a split second. But um, it, if, it, if some of this shadowing looks a little bit different, that's just because I had to go back in and actually redo, that, redo it. All right. So back to where I left off, I want to say the last thing I left off on was um, the fabric here that is folding over this tie here. Um, that fabric is stopping the light from going under here to the bottom of um, the shirt. So that's why we have a shadow kind of going there. And um, what I'm going to end up doing later is add darker shadows here where these creases are because this is where there's even less uh, ambient light. And you'll know that like, once you do your research and stuff like that and you uh, study from life, like I was saying before as another example. So to uh, keep going uh, on a larger scale, we're gonna now cut out um, the drapery underneath this shirt. So now the light has been cut off from the Fabric over here that's bunched up where the tie is, but there is going to be some light that gets in underneath here, and we want to demonstrate that. We want to show that. Now, here's where we end up cutting out small tidbits of the, the highlight. And uh, the light is going to be hit here. And the reason why I'm doing this little bell circular motion is because I'm trying to simulate the fabric um, falling and draping from these two stress points here on the other side of the ties and the light is only hitting the area of the stress points that are uh, protruding out so that's the whole point of the this circular motion as you can see it looks more like drapery now obviously this little corner over here is crap I didn't take the time to do that but let's uh let's let's smoothen this up a little bit I don't want to make an insanely long video for you guys, so um, I'm going to try to wrap this up pretty soon once I get the legs and uh, maybe the sword down, maybe if that's what you guys want to see. Um, and then let's say the light source. Hmm. Let's say this is where it gets difficult because I know a shadow would kind of be here. So does that mean that the rest of the light source is going to be here, seen here? So let's see. All right, I mean, it's, I don't want to say that's close enough, but let's say that that part of the fabric is protruding out enough that it is covering that much light. Um, I'm going to have to clean this up on my own time. All right, we know some of the light is going to get down here too. And it might, a little bit of it might be blocked by the sword. Um, this is probably going to get a little bit of light. area to give it a good old quick save so in order for these figures to um, look three-dimensional using your shading you got to consider even these little small things here because it really adds the depth um, to your artwork I mean, looking at it now, like I didn't like it before, to be honest, when I, when I, before I started shading it. And now I'm looking at it, I'm like, oh, it's really growing on me because now the character, the whole scene is starting to feel three-dimensional. Uh, it's starting to feel like he actually occupies some space. So 
we're going to take a little bit of light off the legs here. You see I'm starting down further because I'm assuming the tunic is casting a light downward. Um, and you got to try to think about where some of your cast shadows and stuff like that will be. Um, and this is kind of a bad curve, so I'm going to have to go in and, and change this. Eventually make this a lot cleaner, but let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of that. All right. Oh, no little detail stuff. Okay. <sighs> um, make this more. Cut that more out. So um, actually, we're going to go all the way down this. We're going to say the light is going to hit the very top of this wrinkle. And then I want to delineate the inside of the leg. That's why I'm not going all the way to the edge. I want to show the inside of the leg a little bit, the difference between the inside of the leg. So that's why I'm leaving a little bit of shadow on the inside. And you get a better understanding of the positioning of his, his right foot um, when I do that. How it's back into space. And um, now we're going to go... We're going to try to show yeah, this is where it starts to get very difficult um, for me. We're going to jump to the other leg right now until I get a, get a better feel. And, and don't forget, like I'm cutting out these wide areas, but I can just as easily go in and add a, um, a little dark area that will show that there's kind of a wrinkle here. Um, but it's not a strong wrinkle. That's why you're not seeing a line for it. And these are really powerful to giving the, clo make, giving the clothing a more realistic feel um, and let you know like whether or not the pants or the tunic or whatever it is is baggy. Uh, I tend to do that afterwards, after I've knocked out a lot of these bigger highlights um, or I've figured out in which the way is going to the the light is going to be hitting the ankles and the legs or you know whatever it is now me making this big line right here just showing that this is a huge wrinkle I, I i'm not too big of a fan of that like this is just um this big little this big flat spot so instead of doing that i'm just going to increase the area in which the light is hitting and that's going to kind of say to the viewer that the fabric itself is actually flatter. Um, so you can see the difference there. They're saying, okay, it's not just kind of like this big lump. It's a little bit flatter. And I'm just going to actually inch that all the way down because I don't want his pants to be like hella baggy. Um, there's not a problem with that just for this character. And I generally like that, but just for this character, I just don't think it fits. Um, and I wasn't doing it consciously. You know, I like to try to make conscious decisions um, in my artwork for the most part. Even though sometimes it's great to have happy accidents for the mo if if you make if you're making good conscious decisions that means you can be consistent, and that's the difference between like, you know, really being a good solid artist is the fact that you can be consistent with your work, uh, and I find that very hard. Like I'm not a hundred percent consistent. My cousin, um, uh, PJ, he's a pretty consistent artist. He's he's pretty talented, um, all around. He can kind of hit, just hit it. Uh, when he feels like it so that's that's cool that's kind of where i'm trying to get to um i think that's where we're all try all trying to get to oh i kind of want to play with that is that does that look like his knees out a little bit it does it's kind of cool kind of a cool shot in my opinion it doesn't work here um but i'm gonna i do like that and i'm actually going to let's get rid of the let's do that i'm going to bring this a little bit deeper so that way this wrinkle isn't too big either. Hmm. Because the left leg in this picture is a little bit further away, I think I need to have more of a shadow here on the side to show that the light is not really coming from that angle. And so I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to add that to that. And I think that's a little bit... I think that's more powerful uh, having that that way, but in doing so, I'm going to have to thin this one out. And I'm actually going to bring it further down. I'm going to start inch inching away at this now. 
in very grotesque ways. Um, okay. All right. Let's see. All right, you know, I'm actually going to get rid of all of this down here because I know the light is going to basically be hitting it. Let's get a quick save going. God forbid my computer turns off again. Um, I will have something saved from where we were at. All right, so I know there's going to be a, a wrinkle here. I'm going to finish that off. I know that this kind of big wrinkle here is going to stop the light from going down, so I'm just going to have a generalized pretty big shadow here. And then I'm just going to go in and then now pick out some smaller um, areas in which the light, I don't think the light will actually hit. Uh, and I think this will give a better, give, give a pretty good understanding of uh, the drapery of these. I want to say like they're hard cotton pants. I don't know what the fabric is. You should, when you're thinking about clothes, that's something you should keep in mind. It sounds stupid, but... It gives you a better idea of how the clothes fall, how they drape. And really, that's the key to making anything you use, uh, anything you draw seem realistic. So a leather jacket is not going to bunch up or is not going to have the same amount of folds as something in fabric. It just doesn't happen. Because the, the fabric itself is so much harder, um, it's just not going to, it's not going to coil up the same way. So what you want to do is you want to study that and make sure you kind of get that and nail that down. So that way, when you draw someone with a leather jacket, it doesn't look like they're wearing a cotton T-shirt. Uh, and I and I see that a lot, and I do that even still to this day. It's because sometimes I'm just drawing and I just, and I'm like, oh yeah, I, I have folds that are just kind of in my my art dictionary, and I just start pulling out these lines of folds. I'm like, oh, I'm drawing a leather jacket. I'm drawing a jean jacket. You know, there are no real big wrinkles in jean jackets. The jean jacket wrinkles are a lot smaller. So then I have to go in and test that and fix those things. So it's important to remember to study and, and keep in mind what fabric you're actually trying to imitate because then that's going to give you a better understanding of how your folds and wrinkles should be. And uh, I firmly understand that uh, the philosophies that I'm talking about are much deeper and that my artwork... <laughs> Hey everybody, I'm back. Just had another derp. Um, got kicked off again. Uh, has to be one of the most frustrating things uh, that happens. I'm really sorry about that, guys. I think in real time when I edit this, hopefully if I edit it well, it will just look like very simple time skip. Um, but even still, it flipping sucks because then a lot of the times you'll see me make changes to the shading that it just jumps and that's just kind of annoying at least in my opinion um and i don't want to subject you guys to that so that sucks but oh well just got to kind of move past it unfortunately keep doing quick save so that way um and get a chance to keep it safe so in the last leg of this i'm probably just going to do the shoes and the sword and i'm going to make it as quick as possible um before this thing craps out on me again so I know that the inside of the shoe itself is going to be um, dark and I'm going to, like I've been doing before, focus on the highlight, but I realize the top of the shoe is going to be the only part that's going to get um, seen. So I'm going to gradually kind of cut this out little by little, or not seen, excuse me, get hit by the light. So the little fold that comes out here, that's going to get cut out as well. Um, and what I think I might add back in here is I'm going to add a little shadow here because the fabric fold is actually going to cover this shoe just a little bit. We want to be conscious of those things because, like I was saying before, it sounds like a broken record, but those are things that's going to make your artwork um, seem three-dimensional and seem like it's fitting in a real space and the light's actually touching it and so on and so forth. Um... So we're just gonna go in here, make that flat, have a shadow underneath that flat. Uh, I'm gonna add the shadow back in here. 
Let's close this. I'm gonna add the shadow back in here. And I'm gonna say that's how much light is probably hitting that shoe. Um, better artists will probably say it's probably hitting more of it. Um, yeah, let me come down a little bit here and say that's where the fold is gonna be. All right, cool. I can, I can live with that. And then this side, the shoes, in my opinion, is basically in half um, of what's being seen by the light. So we're gonna say that probably, and maybe a little bit more. Uh, let's creep over a little bit more. Let's creep over a little bit more. Let's creep over a tad bit more. All right. That's pretty good. I can live with that. We're going to let this part get hit by light as well. Uh, so the side of the shoe flap is going to get hit by light. And the front of it, the thickness of it, will probably cast a shadow. So we want that shadow to still be there. Drop a little cast shadow underneath here. Um, you can play around with this and say the light is actually hitting this. Which is pretty cool. It gives some form of a dimension it kind of shows the gives a deeper dimension to the area light um and you see how i put the back arm in shadow because so it kind of shows you that the arm is really behind him or really to the side of him i could probably you know i could probably play around with this a little bit more and say okay like this is actually touching the light and that, and you'll see once I do that, that'll give it a different tone. And I'm glad I did that. It looks, I think it looks better, because um, then it's showing that the arm isn't directly behind him. Uh, it's showing that it's actually by his side. And there are a couple shadows that I can inch back in here. Let's fill this back up here. Yeah, there's there's so many different things I can go back into and do. I'm gonna hit up these couple of these main shadows that people recognize and use all the time, whether they know like where the light is coming from or not. That's that's too big. Um, yeah, but we know the light is coming down, so we are gonna get a little bit of that. We know the eye, this the ridge over here where the eye is, the brow is still gonna cast a little bit of a shadow. The eyelid. Cast a little bit of shadow. We're going to exaggerate that a little bit. I think my cousin actually might have taught me that too. Um, and he was telling me something and saying that the eye cast a shadow, and that was really cool because then it started to make me think about that differently. Mm. And let's say if the light's coming from the left here, this left angle, that uh, we could potentially have a shadow here on the side of the nose as well. I rock with it. I can, I can, uh, I can live with this. And uh, there was a shadow on the inside of here that I missed earlier during my first derp. So, um, feeling it. Feeling it, feeling it, feeling it. Uh, they'll say a little light is actually touching all of this. Actually, it's not. It's not touching all of that. But just area here so the area underneath the pummel is actually uh, the pummel is a circular thing at the top is actually casting a bit of a shadow everything where this hand is is casting a shadow uh, we're gonna say that there's gonna be some light here nope. and we're gonna say that casts a little bit of a shadow there's gonna be some light here so you know this this is gonna cast a shadow so um, being able to add the light and shadow here on the sword is actually helping me give my sword a little bit more dimension that I didn't give with the artwork. Um, kind of won this sword, so it doesn't really look that great, or I'm not incredibly proud of it. So sorry about that, guys. Um, I, I kind of now wish I would have done something better, but it's an ink already. Um, so around this little crest thing that's kind of protecting this jewel, I'm actually gonna say the light is hitting that a bit. 
And then what I'm also going to do is saying the light has actually gotten in on the inside of this crust and it's hitting that a bit as well. And I could probably do that for the, in no, see, I don't want to, I don't want to lose my shadow. So let's say go out like this and then I'll gradually inch it out. So this is probably still shadow. But once you get here, the light got into this thing. Get some good dimension here. So that doesn't look terrible. Okay, 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 okay. Um, hmm. Hmm. See, now the light is actually hitting this stuff. Let's see how that looks. Okay, yeah. I'm going to come around here and say the light has actually got an opportunity to hit this. And it kind of shows that there's like a little peak here. Maybe we'll just get rid of that altogether. Um, that's actually where the real, because it's coming from, the light source is coming from the left. So that's where the real cast shadow is actually going to be from that side of the sword. And I'm going to actually let that be. Um, get rid of this. Yep. All right. So now we're going to get a little bit more technical. I'm going to try to get some straight lines in here. Um. And because the tip of the sword here just kind of, it's actually on a little bit of a slant. I'm giving that a, some d more dimension there. All right. Um, I could actually just get rid of this. This is, we don't really need this. Actually, we don't really need this. Hold on. Hold on. Crest that that sits in is going to create a, a shadow. We're going to say there's a little ledge here, and that's going to create a shadow. A little uneven ledge. Just debating on getting rid of it. Yeah, I'm going to get rid of it. So that's just in shadow. I'll leave that there and say this little bit here is in shadow. Boom. 
Uh, so sometimes there's a need for these really big shadows. Other times there is not. Um, I think this is it right here. So, all right, guys. Uh, sorry for all the derps and the video cutting out. So I hope um, you guys like the video. If you do, please uh, like, share, and subscribe and let people know. Really appreciate you guys taking a look. Thank you.